had at the Ruck and Malls and at the lineup. The disappointing feature for the South African game, they must now, to have a chance of winning this game, they have to win their own ball at the lineouts. Roebuck restarts for Australia. Nicely taken by Stradom. It's a good drive by the South African forwards. Keith Andrews in there, number three. Ground being won, the South Africans have now worked themselves up to about 12 metres inside the, uh, the South African half. Dupreer, Campisi, he ran back into his 22, so he can't kick directly into touch. Strauss is back, so is Stransky. And no doubt they will come all the way back for a 22 dropout. Well, from a defensive situation, that tactic... As we said in the second test, very often a useful one to have to get you down into your opposition half of the field. Campisi always taking the right options. Well, that was good ball won by South Africa from that mall and they'll have to do a little bit more with it than that. A little bit of a mix up there amongst the Australians. Lippy waiting for advantage, Stransky. Back for it is Matt Burke, the replacement player. In fact, it's not, it's Roebuck. Beautifully taken by him. Hasn't found his touch. In fact, he couldn't kick to touch. Now Yabair has to follow suit. Going a little bit too high. Under Yabair going in so far, Jones. Burke now in possession. Scragged by Stradom. Australia have been very, very efficient at the Ruck and Malls. Nick Far jones going over to the referee and just having a word with him. 1,877 people here. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Still Australia lead by one point. <laughs> referee saying that it wasn't thrown in straight, so... Ask him full cans to tell him what option he wants. And in, inevitably it's the scrum. That's Ili Tambur just breaking away quite quickly. Gets it from Tim Gavin, goes on the charge. Held up by Strauss, but he's made it over the advantage line. Australia lose it. The South Africans now been blown up for coming into that mall, not behind the back feet of the last men in the, in the mall for South Africa. And so a chance here for Marty Roebuck to extend the lead. There's Ian MacDonald on the far side there, Francois Pinot on the near side, the requirement to join the, that mall situation from behind the feet of the last man. So as yet the South Africans have not been near the Wallaby 22 metre area and that man Bob Dwyer, despite the one point difference, must be pretty satisfied with the situation at the moment. Very difficult to tackle all day. Marty Roebuck who's been successful with his two attempts and they were both uh, very well directed kicks. On the Springbok 10 metre line. And he's done very well again for Australia. First blood in the second half to the Wallabies. Fetch the ball wide from that sort of position that you're getting, which is not quality, to allow the entry of Andre Jabeur in the back line. Dan Hunter Stratum couldn't catch. Far Jones seized on it very quickly. Little trying to barge through the middle. Jacques Ullet there was the defender in that time. Far Jones again. Joubert. And the bounce just getting away from him under Joubert. Was in two minds as to whether to go for it or hang back and hope for the bounce. I think a little bit of a misunderstanding there between the Springbuck backs. Nobody calling for the ball and that was the indication that came from Andre Joubert's lips.
Well, one must give full credit to the Australian pack of forwards. They're very, very well drilled. A lot of experience amongst the time type five. Only Garrick Morgan is playing in his eighth test. Hasn't the experience. Now the gain of penalty. The interference by the South Africans on the Australians. Penalty to Australia. Marty Roebuck just having a look to see whether there wasn't the possibility of taking a short kick there. In fact, it was Scotty Bowen, but I'm sure it's now going to be Marty Roebuck, who's been successful with three out of three, a hundred percent record on the day. Twenty-three minutes left of this test match. Oh, if ever a player is hoping that he can gird his team and get them back into the action it's that man Francois Pinar twelve in the first test thirteen in the second test this for his twelve in the third and both touch judges it's just Interesting the way they do confer and then just make absolutely certain that that ball was through the post. Well, that penalty was vital one for Marty Roebuck and for Australia because it means that South Africa now have to score twice. And I can tell you, I'm afraid at the moment they don't look like they're going to score. Jones relishing in the ability of the forwards to control this ball. Now Far Jones comes away with it and completely is on flying on the outside. Far Jones inside now taken on by Tim Gavin. He's a very big number eight. Far Jones just popping it up to Phil Cairns. South African defense is at sixes and sevens. This is Campiti. Sees the opening and it's Tim Horan will get in for the tie. It really was, I'm afraid, a matter of time before the Australian, the South African defence just had to show leaks in it. Australians are plenty on the outside. It was Campisi who found the half gap initially, which created the space there for Tim Horan to go to continue that wonderful try scoring streak that he has in Test Rugby. A try every second test, virtually on average. Lovely little flip pass, and, but lovely support from the full Australian back line. And it was those two early drives and a lovely break there by Nick Parr Jones which created that extra space, pulled the South Africans in and then Horan over in the corner. Well, it's amazing that Timmy Horan is only 23 years old, played his 30th test match today and that's his 15th try. And now Roebuck to see if he can extend his record. Again, it came from outstanding forward control. Far Jones so wide awake, getting Campisi away on the right-hand side. The feed back to Far Jones, and how often did we see Far Jones tackled and then still the Wallabies get the ball back. Tim Gavin was prominent. Will that curl in? Will it curl in? The touch judges wait. It's two extra points to Australia. On a straight on, Robert de Preer, Joe Stransky, Jack Willy Fier op een centerpositie, wat voor Dirk kon goed beschikbaar gesteld. Zelf ik af die Australiërs probeert Dirk een trek. Slaag niet daar niet, toch kan zich de Afrika die bal nog gooien, die hanteert goed op de kom van Australië. Jan Strauss, François Pinar, Robert de Preij en Joe Stransky verstaan elkaar niet zo lekker. Nou daar niet, François Pinar naar Jan Strauss. Dat is een goede stukje spel die is in Afrika. Ian McDonald was daar, Robert de Preij. 
Jelustranský. Schop pro mě Jack Willy Firvat pro Matrná se ten David Campis je zdar. Goed gereedigd, David Campisi. Het is niet makkelijk voor een man zoals Marty Roebak om David Campisi daar te hebben. Hij is zoals het tweede heel achter. En op die ouwe eind, om te eind het tweede center is zowel als Noskakel, zoals hij speelt. Zuid-Afrika waar die bal wendt, is Tian Strauss, de 6 meter op Annie Doelijn al. En Rick Pols van Abel Dier van die doelijn is een zicht voor Zuid-Afrika. François Pinaar is François Pinaar waar hij het om. François Pinaar is waar hij het om. Heel van die springmokken wat van aandag krijg, wat niet lekker voel nie. Neer het Morrison is bij hom. Hij weg voelt die man wat daar oor die voorjelijn gekom het. Hij is op zijn voeten geblij, net goed lang genoeg dat François Pinaar kon deerkom te samen met Ian McDonald en is daar misschien een verleentheid van Zuid-Afrika om hierdie wedstrijd te wen. Soos verlede week op Ballymore waar hulle mooi teruggeveg het in die laaste 20 minuten van die wedstrijd. Daar die kaptein François Pina wat sy hardtijd gespeel het vandag. Zuid-Afrika is het tweede drie. Joel Stranske wat die bal gestel het. Daar is vier minuten, speelt hij wat wordt blij. Heinrich Voels lijkt het voor mij gaan die veld verlaat. Gaan dat die groot geleentheid wees bij Joost van der Rijstuysen. Heinrich Voels, of liever Joel Stranski, zijn schop is tussen die palen deur. Zuid-Afrika 12 punten, 19 punten voor Australië. Dat was die eindtelling in die eerste toets, maar net in die gunst van Zuid-Afrika. Heinrich Voels is recht. Vier minuten speelt hij wat oorblij. Zuid-Afrika 12 punten. Hulle sal twee keer moet punten aanteken as hulle die toets wil win. Anders strijd om Seres Meine. Goeie drijfspel door Zuid-Afrika. Henry Hannibal, James Small. Een lang aangeer na André Joubert. Probeer wel bij Campesi voorbij van als schoppen die bal steeds voor en toe. Campesi wat voor hem achter toe laat bal Zuid-Afrika krijgt van Marianne. Strokskop. Strokskop van Australië. Die scheidvrachter sê die man is gauw pas. Baie goeie beslissing daar dier die scheidvrachter meneer Morrison. André Hubert wat deurgaan en kijk net vir James Small wat vir David Campesi daar terughoud. Bijna, bijna. Amper is nie so goed so seker nie. Tel het ook baie verbeter van sy eerste toets af. Met die ervare Michael Leina wat beseer is. En die reeks misgeloop het. Sy dat die goeie belekking vir die toekomst. François Pina. Hasel baie drie gebruik van die Spanse doelijn af. Nico Wegner wat beheer. Word bijna deurgeplukt. Jill Stranski. Henry Hannibal, waar hy wil deurkom, probeer beskikbaar stel. Kan hy uitkom, skuit terug vir sy aan teerfout, Australië waar die bal kan hou, gooi in die middel van die veld. Binnenkant Zuid-Afrika is een kwart gebied. Dis stellig die laaste skrum van hierdie derde toets. Was daar al een belangrike vastkop vir Zuid-Afrika, is hierdie in die olie. Hulle gaan weer sak. Wat gesels met Tony Daly. Hy druk hier nie diskant tegen Keith Andrews. Skare tel die sekondes af, amplik vier sekondes. Goeie skram van Zuid-Afrika, ek verskof vrees, dis alles te laat. Die serene wat afgaan, skuitsrechter sê, ons gaan weer sak vir hierdie skram. Amtelijk is die speeltijd voorbij, dit hang nou net van die skuitverwachter af. Nick Pa Jones wat aangooi, skuitverwachter sê, is nie daar nie. Ons gooi nie weer in nie, dis die einde van die wedstrijd. Zuid-Afrika wat die reeks verloor, hulle verloor hier die toets met 19 punten teenoor 12. Applaus vir Australië.
Die houwers van die wereldbeker na dat die eerste toets verloor het vir die selfde telling is hulle heel te mal afgeskryf, hulle het baie kritiek verdeer maar hulle het teruggekom in die tweede toets, kort tuigend gewin, hulle het met bal besit hierdie toets ook baie goed gedoen